Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're just going to give people another minute or so to trickle in, get their audio started, and we will get started shortly. Thank you again, please stand by. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our next generation automation webinar. Let's go ahead and get started. I see some of you are still trickling in, but we have enough of a quorum. I'm really delighted to be talking about automation today with some of the veterans from the industry. Before we get started, just a couple of quick housekeeping tips. Feel free to ask questions at any time via Zoom. We'll keep a record of all the questions and take Q&A at the end. Uh, we might even try and answer a couple of relevant questions right in the middle, uh, if possible. And no need to take any notes. This recording, uh, this entire conversation and the presentation will be distributed afterwards. And with that, let's get started. I'd love to introduce the panel today. Jeff, Greg, Russ, if you would join me. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me today. Uh, Jeff, will you please go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure, sure. Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Jeff Stats, uh, Head of Marketing for uh, Talent Launch. Uh, Talent Launch is a nationwide network of independently operating staffing and recruitment firms. Uh, right now, we have about eight or nine brands. We're, we're going to have a couple more coming on board. Um, and they mix, you know, we have a mix from light, in, uh, light industrial to um, IT to legal. Um, and then we have community brands as well. So we're very much diverse in terms of of who we serve and how we serve and we cover uh geez i think it's 38 states now um in terms of what we can do and how we put talent to work so excited to be here and thanks a lot package and, and team jeff thank you thank you for being here greg everyone um, my name is greg gearing i'm the customer experience supervisor for pride staff um so pride staff is a nationwide commercial staffing firm. Uh, we operate on a franchise model in about 85 offices across the, the country. And in addition to our, our primary light industrial brand, we also have um, some additional brands where we service accounting and finance, uh, the insurance industry, as well as uh, pharmacy staffing. So I'm excited to be here and, and look forward to talking to you guys today. Thank you for having me. Yep. Thank you, Craig. And Russ? Yeah, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. I'm Russ Danford. I'm head of uh, strategic technologies for Matrix. Uh, Matrix is uh, about a 38, 40 year old company. I've been around for quite a while and our focus is really on the professional staffing, um, primarily on IT. But uh, as the times have changed, we've started to get into more um, different types of staffing, staffing within the professional world from administrative and legal and different areas like that. But uh, we are a nationwide firm and um, happy to be with you here today. Thanks so much for inviting me. Thank you, Russ, and thank you everyone for joining me. Uh, and those of you who I have not had the pleasure of meeting you yet, my name is Pankaj. I'm one of the founders of Sense. Uh, you know, started the company about five years ago, but prior to that, I ran staffing companies for 15 years. So I very much live and breathe this industry and very much come from your world. So uh, the agenda for today, you know, we are really delighted today to be talking about automation, but just not about automation as a buzzword, about the fact that, you know, 
some part of automation is table stakes. All of you are doing it today. But what does the next generation automation look like? What are modern staffing companies doing that, uh, you know, to enhance their tech and uh, enhance their tech, tech stack, giving a personalized experience to their contractors, their customers, their own employees. And then obviously we'll defer to the leaders that we have on the call today to talk about the tech stack that we've built. We'll also keep ample time for Q&A, and it's our promise to you that we will absolutely end on time. So with that, let's get started. Uh, here is a quick introduction to Sense for those of, who, those of you who do not know the company. Like I said, we started Sense about five years ago with a singular vision of becoming the first engagement platform designed specifically for the staffing industry. We've stayed very true to that vision. We today have over 350 customers, every single one of which is a staffing firm, which means every feature, every report, every automation, every piece of analytics that we do within our platform is something that is relevant to staffing executives and professionals like yourselves. We're also enterprise ready. So we work with a third of the largest staffing companies in the US today. These 157 firms are the firms that are over $100 million in revenue as recognized by SIA. Sense is already live with 50 of them and six of the top 10 firms globally. Since our inception, we've raised about $24 million in funding from Google and Axel, two of the best blue chip investors you can hope to have. And the Sense engagement platform essentially stands on three different pillars, growth, retention, and automation. Growth talks about adding more people to your top of the funnel. How can we help you make more placements? And in other words, help you improve your top line. Retention talks about keeping the people that you have with you longer, which means reducing attrition, reducing involuntary turnover, increasing redeployment, increasing loyalty, which actually goes towards increasing your bottom line. And then automation takes the busy work out of your recruiters. We think of automation as two different paradigms, co-pilot and autopilot. Co-pilot would be things that your recruiters can get help with on a daily basis. And autopilot is this kind of things that keep happening while your recruiters are sleeping. So those are the three pillars that the Sense platform is based on. Now, the one that we're gonna be talking about today is around automation. Automation is table stakes. All of you, I think, would agree with the fact that digital transformation arrived for all of us in March. With the pandemic coming on and everybody you know, was forced to work remotely, wherever you were in your digital transformation journey, you had to accelerate it. You had to do things you hadn't done before and you had to use technology to do that. And obviously automation is constantly evolving. It's changing month after month. I cannot tell you the number of customers we now talk to who are interested in making sure that their tech stack is completely ready for what will happen as we come out of this pandemic. So why is automation important? Well, first of all, if you think of staffing operations itself, it's a pretty inefficient funnel. Uh, I think most of you as staffing executives will identify with this funnel that I have here. You're probably very, uh, very well versed in this fact. If you start with a thousand or so candidates, you'd be lucky if hundred of them get to a point that they have an offer. 90% of them you will just lose at the top of your funnel. Of those 100, you're lucky if 80 people will actually start. Several people will just drop off after getting an offer and before starting. Of the people who start, you'll be lucky if you know, another 60 of them will end because people will leave their assignments in the middle. According to SIA, 31% of the people do not finish their assignments today in the US. And of the people who do finish, a dismally small number of those people will actually get redeployed. So you are essentially constantly running on a treadmill trying to fill this funnel over and over again. And if you think about the life of a recruiter in your company, as you can see on the pie chart on the right hand side, only a third of their time today is being spent in actually doing what we call human stuff, which is either talking to a candidate or talking to a client and convincing both parties to make a position happen. Another third of their time is simply spent on data entry, a lot of which can be automated and another third of their time is spent on prospecting in top of the funnel, a lot of which can be automated as well. You know, Jeff, Russ, Greg, you guys, you guys know all about these inefficiencies. I mean, you run these funnels today. You know, love to get your take on some of this as well. Yeah, I think um, if you ask the recruiters, uh, they'll tell you that it's all data entry and they never have time for human stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and it's funny. I mean, you're, you're operating, you know, all this is 
all this is true. And then you operate with COVID where, you know, they're, you know, and, and the unemployment and people applying to apply, but that don't want to work. And so you're running into all these like market factors and then, you know, throw in the fact that you're dealing with, you have less people working. I mean, you know, just because of internally I'm talking about, I mean, you're, you're operating at a branch that may be half staffed or quarter staffed. And, and so, you know, the data entry becomes monstrous and, you know, because you have to abide by all these things. So, yeah, I think that like efficiency or inefficiency is 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 topping out right now. Where like the need for automation is is just even greater. Like I'm always amazed at how many don't embrace automation. And I think right now is is a key, at least for what I'm seeing. Yeah, and, and Jeff, I 100% I agree with you as well. I think it's a it's a big thing in where we're at today in in the current environment. Automation is is really something that you have to operate with, you have, you need, um, whether that's from, as you mentioned, lack of data entry, because maybe your, your teams are short staffed. Um, but additionally, when it comes down to it, this is a, a people business. And from a, a perspective of what we can do for our frontline recruiters, the more we can help automate some of those data entry, and we can really focus on those human stuff, and we can create those connections between our candidates and, and our clients and, and help make that match. Um, the more value we can add as an organization or, or as a company to, to our staffing operations. Yeah, I think both of you guys kind of covered the bases on it. I mean, it's, it's really on multiple different fronts that automation is paying off. Uh, certainly during COVID, we've, we've as a company, had our struggles, um, you know, in terms of staffing. And as Jeff said, you know, we're doing more with less. Uh, so the need for automation is just that much more. But you look at it on the flip side and, and the candidates expectations have only increased um, as other companies have, have sort of done the digital transformation piece. They, they expect more from us. So we have to deliver more with fewer resources. And oh, by the way, our, our clients are trying to pay us less too. So uh, there's, there's kind of a lot going on there and, and automation is certainly a huge part of our strategy moving forward. Yeah, Russ, I mean, you said something that very uh, hugely resonates with me. In fact, I'm going to cover this a little bit in this next slide. Uh, you know, in my head, there are now two classes of automation. Uh, you know, there is one which is essentially what you think of as table stakes. It's your maintenance, your data cleanup. I cannot tell you the number of companies we talk to where they're afraid of their own data, where they are like, we probably don't have the right end dates. We probably haven't updated people's information in years. You know, so even just doing that is such a huge productivity gain for staffing firms. But that to me is just table stakes. Everybody should have that. We'll obviously talk, to, talk about tips and tricks to make that happen. But to, what, to Russ's point, to what he was talking about, both all candidates and customers now expect personalized communication. They absolutely expect you to meet them where they live. People expect an omni-channel strategy. Hey, I like email. I like text messages. I like a survey. That's how you should communicate with me. My experience with your company should be memorable, and that's why I will continue working with you. So the idea of triggered communication, hey, you just started. What's the right thing to say now? You're just about to end. What's the right thing to say now? You've been happy with our company. Hey, can you leave us a review on Glassdoor? Or can we ask you for a referral? That's event-based, event-triggered, automated communication, which feels very personalized. And at any point that the recipient comes back to you with a question, you should have the ability to take over from a bot or from an automation to an actual human. Uh, so you know, that's what I think is super exciting about how modern staffing companies are thinking about next level of automation. And we'll talk a lot more about that today. So, um, but why is all of this important? I mean, if you think about this, what I've done here is this is your talent life cycle, you know, starting from attracting candidates to getting them to a point where you're deploying them on an assignment, then you're taking care of them while they're on assignment. And then of course you're redeploying them once they finish an assignment. If you look at this, every single step of this life cycle, there are huge use cases. Can you get you know, more, can you send people first day instructions? Can you get first week check-ins? Can you get an end day confirmation? Can you get NPS surveys and pulse checks? In fact, I would almost challenge all of you. You would probably recognize a lot of these things. 
And you probably are using a lot of point solutions to do literally one of these things. You probably are doing one thing just to do, just to ask people for referrals. You're probably using a software just for NPS. You're probably using a software just for a timesheet, uh, you know, timesheet collection or timesheet reminders. Imagine if you were one, able to do that with a single platform and then two, Think about what it enables for you. This is what it enables for you. Every single thing here, if you read through this, has a bottom line impact on your company. Sourcing more candidates, bottom line impact. Reducing time to submit, increasing fill rate, reducing drop off. I mean, you can read this entire slide over and over again, and every single one of these things will improve your bottom line. So, you know, for those of you who haven't yet embraced automation, this is the reason that I think it is one of the reasons that separates great companies from good companies because they're exactly doing this and this has a huge impact on their bottom line. I mean, I know the panelists we have with us today are, are gurus when it comes to automation and have done a lot of this. Um, I don't know if any of you wanted to chime in at this point, but this is a slide that gets me excited if I was a staffing company CEO. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if you haven't doubled down on automation, I mean, that was the thing that I was, you know, during, you know, you set a package to start with, like, you know, COVID uh, is, is forcing digital transformation. Like, and honestly, there are benefits to it. I mean, there are benefits to remote work and companies are seeing productivity and, and, you know, and, and, you know, automation has to be a part of it. And I, I mean, we've, we've done so much and we've, it made us think outside the process, I guess, you know, because again, we have our processes and we're so like hyped up in those processes, but then we started, because of all this, we started thinking like, let's just reinvent the process and then start figuring out the gaps. And that's opened up a lot of doors because the benefits are there. Um, and it's like a stress test. It's, you know, it's like the bar rescue stress test. Like you've got, you got to do more with less. And so how do you do it? And, yep. and so it's been great. I mean, and I would encourage anybody, you got to look at automation. There's some easy softball wins that you could have right now. Yeah. Hey, Panka, just real quickly, I'll add on your point about being able to consolidate systems. I mean, we've done that ourselves with your tool, as a matter of fact. I mean, we've consolidated at least two, maybe three different systems and are really leveraging everything using Sense. And between Sense and we're a Bullhorn customer as well, you know, you can pretty much do anything you want or need to do with those tools. And it simplifies things. It reduces costs. Um, and certainly helps to provide a better customer experience for our clients, our customers. Um, so just wanted to add that there. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So let's get into the meat of this. You know, what I wanted to do today is let's walk you through some use cases. You guys all saw the talent life cycle. You saw the four stages of the talent life cycle. We'll go through every stage and talk about how you can use automation in that stage and how it can be helpful. So the number one thing is database automation. You know, your database is probably the one thing that you have spent the most amount of money on. You know, 10, 20 years, you know, in your company's history, you've been paying job boards and other sources, hundreds of thousands of dollars every year to now get to a point where you have millions of candidates. How do you turn that into a self-sourcing, self-cleaning machine so it becomes the first stop for your recruiters and not the last stop? So. When we think of database automation at Sense, we think of it in three different pieces. One is database enrichment. Just, you know, I've got 100,000 records or a million records, but I'm missing an email, I'm missing a cell phone, I'm missing a zip code, I'm missing their availability. Second is just your database cleanup. Here are people who are active, here are people who are passive, here are people who've never responded to us. And then the third is the whole idea around database reactivation. So, Anytime you have a new territory, a new job, you first ought to be able to reach out to your database and say, which ones of you is interested in this job rather than going to a job board. This is probably, you know, from a use case standpoint, the largest use case that Sense customers run today. Uh, so we have a whole suite of tools around database automation. So when you think about database automation, you can actually turn your ATS into the biggest sourcing tool that you have. Uh, you know, Russ, I know you've done some really interesting things around this. So I was going to, you know, before I even talk about the slide, um, I was going to punt this over to you and talk about some of the things that you guys are doing using database automation over at Matrix. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, Pankaj. 
I'm, I'm a little bit of a geek when it comes to this stuff. I love the tools. Um, it's pretty much, you know, however creative you are, you can do anything that you want to do. And just a matter of sort of thinking through what the use cases are and then applying it. But, um, you know, we've done things in <clears throat> kind of all of these areas from the database reactivation piece. Uh, we like to run occasionally what we call raise the dead campaigns where essentially you know, we look into our database and see you know, who have we not been in contact with in any way, shape, or form in a certain period of time, and <clears throat> making sure that we uh, reach back out to those people, see if they have an interest in continuing to engage with us, um, and ideally, obviously, try to, uh, to update their information. Um, beyond that, we also do database enrichment. We update zip codes, which is huge for searching for recruiters. A lot of times in job boards, sometimes we don't get a zip code that comes in um, when a candidate gets added. So we're doing a lot of that. Um, and one big thing that you mentioned earlier is just, um, you know, work preferences and communication preferences. So we ask people to kind of update how they want us to communicate uh, with them and what types of things that they're interested in uh, hearing from us about. And then we're also doing uh, quite a bit in terms of database cleanup. Um, in terms of updating consultant statuses before and after placements, um, you know, just kind of basic things like that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, and, you know, this is the other favorite use case that I have on database, uh, data, database enrichment and database engagement. This was shocking to me the first time this was presented to us, but one of our largest customers, they do, uh, let's just say they do hundreds of thousands of placements every year presented this analysis back to us that after they started using Sense, they found out that 50% of the placements they make every single year come from candidates that are already sitting in their database. Yet every single year, they have never been able to reduce their spend with job boards. They will either keep it flat or it will actually go up. And once they started seeing these statistics, that's when they essentially started talking about, we absolutely have to reduce our job board spend because we're, uh, the, the first place we're sourcing from is actually owned by us. And it literally needs to become your recruiter's first, uh, first stop. Um, Jeff, Russ, Greg, again, would love, uh, love to hear some of your thoughts and experiences on this. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I, I, I can believe it. I mean, we spend so much time filling the funnel, the top of the funnel, and it's the amount of money. And again, it, it, this is one of the good, you know, the good benefits, if there are one, on COVID is that we reduced our job spend because we had to. And so it, it, made, it made our recruiters and our companies think creatively about where to find candidates. Because everyone said, you turn this off, well, we're never going to find candidates again. And I'm like, well, why don't we start looking at our database? I mean, we have like a, a, a three quarters of a million records. Like there, there's got to be a couple people in there. I got to believe it like that, that could work there. So it's actually changed our process and we've actually been able to, to have them adopt, you know, let's look in our database first when we have a job order and maybe it's a hard to fill job order um, where we're thinking creatively about running some of that. And then that is actually turning into a raise your hand campaign to, to you know, that runs weekly for a couple of our companies that ask them, are you willing to work this week? Or, you know, what are you looking for? Um, because again, it's just getting these people like stirring the database up. Yeah. And Russ, I know you guys re-engage with your database all the time. Yeah, we do. I mean, we definitely have a number of different campaigns. One thing that we've found that's been pretty successful, uh, we have one client that has um, essentially, you know, rules around how long consultants can stay on billing. After a certain period of time, they have to roll off. So, and they have to be gone for you know, six months, I think. So we've set up campaigns to re-engage with those individuals uh, several months ahead of their return to work potential dates um, and reactivate them and get them submitted and placed you know, with the same client um, in, a, in a pretty timely and efficient manner. So that's one way that we're doing it. A bunch of different other use cases there, but uh, that one yeah, no. stands out. No, that is huge. Uh, you know, when I was running staffing companies, Russ, we would work with clients, especially like fi financial institutions, where they would essentially go, hey, there is so much we just have to train you from a risk and compliance standpoint that if you worked in our company before, you probably have a three-month head start on anybody else that we could hire. And just bringing those people back was, you know, just revenue productivity for them from day one. Yep. So, 
So, you know, I mean, this is clearly something we're all passionate about, but I'll summarize this to say, you know, there are, here are some of the key takeaways from database automation. And this list can keep going on and on. But if you are a staffing company executive, and if you think about this, you're lowering your cost of acquisition, which means you're lowering your cost per hire. Your data integrity keeps going up. Your speed to hire keeps going up. You're not waiting to, you know, get resumes and so on and so forth. Your recruiter productivity goes up. And it also actually makes for a better candidate experience. Candidates feel like you do reactivate them. You do reach back out to them. I can't tell you the number of times our customers will run a campaign where they'll essentially say, they'll reach out to a million people and say, are you looking for a job? And, you know, or will you be looking for a job soon? And maybe 100,000 people will say yes, and the 900,000 will say no. They'll mark those 100,000, then they'll ask them, which month would you be looking for a job in November, December, Jan, Feb? And now with the small piece of information that's written into any field you want into Bullhorn, you can actually send out, send up, set up triggers and your recruiters will simply be reminded and say, hey, these 3,000 people are becoming available in this month of November, let's go reach out to them. So pretty, pretty powerful stuff. And then the second part uh, you know, of this funnel is recruitment marketing and sourcing. Uh, you know, this is probably right up Jeff's alley. You know, he runs, he, 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 runs, he runs marketing, but this is essentially how do you give your recruiters and marketers superpowers? You know, how can you, uh, how can you nurture your database for a constant pipeline? So again, there's a lot I can talk here, but I'm just going to defer this to, you know, Jeff, Greg, Russ, you guys to sort of, you know, give us some of your wisdom here. I don't have to go first. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> and it doesn't matter to me. I, I will jump in, I guess, very quickly. I mean, we're doing some kind of cool things as it relates to the sourcing um, with bullhorn care sheets and sense for automation um, and basically just making it easier and more efficient for recruiters to be able to, to reach out to candidates very quickly as, uh, as jobs come into our system and, and try to get a hold of them you know, very rapidly. We do a lot of EMS-based business. And uh, the amount of competition that we have is just incredible. Um, and the number of recruiters that are all trying to get a hold of a lot of the same people is, is amazing. So you have to be as fast as you possibly can. And we've been able to, to leverage some of these automation tools to help us speed up that process. So that's, that's a big piece of it, I think, for us. Yeah, no, Russ, that is amazing because, you know, uh, the VMS world is the world where time to submit is probably your biggest, you know, secret weapon. Uh, the VMS, the MSP, for example, would only let you submit one or two candidates. And if, you know, there are 40 vendors supplying to this particular buyer, if you're not submitting your candidates fast enough, the position will go on hold before you even get a chance to apply to that. We're also seeing some of our customers starting to build just their own talent pools for every single client. So they'll essentially be like, these are the kind of people we have earmarked for Google and Wells Fargo and Chevron and so on and so forth. So they actually have these talent pools created. So when a position opens, they immediately can reach out to those people. And keep in mind, you know, this can also help you in a variety of other ways. Let me give you one example. We see this all the time. You have an offer, somebody's about to start, uh, and let's say they don't show up. If they don't, and if you were nurturing your database correctly, you probably have a list of silver medalists. These are people who interviewed with the same hiring manager for the same position, but you know somebody else got picked up over them. You immediately can go back to the hiring manager and say, hey, how about this person instead? And it's very likely you'll get that placement. You can actually do the same exact thing for your customers. You can nurture your customers and reach out to them and say, when are you opening your next position? Let me start lining up some candidates for you. And those are the kind of companies that, you know, that hiring managers love now. Yeah, we do two different programs on the hot job. So we do a hot jobs program for our okay. candidates among, so we actually, it's a combination of, of our website as well as sense for texting and emailing. So every week, you know, available candidates will get a message that they're, you know, hot jobs of the week. Um, and we've done it where we've actually matched it up with skill sets in Bullhorn. So we're a Bullhorn customer as well. So we've matched it up with the skill sets in Bullhorn. Um, and then also we do it on the client side where we'll do, um, you know, we'll, we've done drip campaigns and nurture campaigns that both transactional, um, like MPC, um, yeah. where, you know, we've got to get that going. And then also um, just uh, value add campaigns where we're prospecting. And it's a five-week drip series. 
um, to, to, you know, hone in on a, a branch um, that we want to drive more client business. So, yeah, there's a lot there. And, and, and you can save a lot of money by looking at it that way. Yeah, no, you stole the words out of my mouth, Jeff, because, you know, I wanted to touch on client marketing as well, right? The idea of just putting clients in a drip campaign or a nurture campaign. And, and as soon as somebody engages with you, you can take them out of templates and just hand them over to a human being. Uh, so still feels very, very personalized, but just make sure nobody slips through the cracks. Right, right. Yeah. And then the other thing that I think is becoming really powerful is using artificial intelligence, using natural language to actually become a recruiting assistant. You know, uh, Sense has a chat bot, uh, which will actually help you do conversational recruiting. And it'll actually help you do both things. You can screen candidates as they come in. They can come in via your website or they can come in because they applied to a job. Or you can just reach out to the 100,000, the three quarters of a million people that are sitting in your database. And you simply just reach out to them directly and essentially say, hey, click on this link and answer a few questions. And you can immediately screen these people. You can enrich their information. And now you know who to talk to. Greg, I know you're, you're a power user of this. So I wanted to call on you to, you know, to share some of your experience about this. Yeah, thanks, Monkage. Uh, this is a, a big thing for us, and and I think in today's environment, and and just to really echo on a lot of the the things that we've been talking about, doing more with less, and and trying to really operate with automation as the key to to really push some of those personalized experiences and improve upon um, what we're doing at the desk level. The database that we have for us is is massive. We're we're talking like four million candidates. And that database is only as good as the information is relevant. So this particular piece of technology really provides us with an opportunity to not only reach out from an automation perspective and, and keep our recruiters focusing on building those relationships on, on the candidates that they're working with, but we're also updating that database so that we have accurate information in there so that when we're, we are posting a job and we are looking for a new requisition, um, our first stop is into a database rather than a, a job board. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, I can tell you a variety of use cases that customers find this powerful in. Some customers have actually built a COVID bot. You know, if you're in a light industrial environment, if you're in a commercial environment, they're actually just sending a bot over every week, every few days to do, to essentially ask questions about if somebody comes back and says, hey, I'm feeling a little bit of fever and I'm sick, they'll just run them through a number of questions to find out if they need to be referred to a hospital or if they can still go to work. Or if they find somebody which was a positive case and they have to do contact tracing, it can still be all automated. Also keep in mind, one of the things that I keep hearing from a lot of our customers is, as, as we are coming out of the pandemic, the number of candidates who are now applying to a job are four times higher than it was you know, before. I mean, obviously, you know, really unfortunate, but there are a lot more people now looking for a role. You don't have four times the number of recruiters, yet you wanna fill these positions quicker. Uh, so the only way to do that is to engage with them automatically and find that needle in the haystack and say, hey, my bot talked to a hundred people, but here are the three who should really talk to a recruiter. So there are also pretty solid and pretty strong use cases there to make sure that you can use AI to, sc to screen your candidates. All right. And this is very close to my heart. Um, you know, the entire time that I ran staffing companies, uh, you know, we always won the best place to work for award. And candidates in our industry are very fickle. They'll come work for you if you get, take better care of them. You know, they will change employers in a second. Uh, so the idea that we can help companies using engagement, grow their NPS scores and grow their Glassdoor scores is very, very central to our heart. Um, I know this is big for all of you, Russ, Jeff, Greg, uh, love for you to share a little bit more. Russ, I know you have a really interesting story here as well. Yeah, I mean, we definitely uh, leverage Sense to really help, especially with Glassdoor and Google ratings. That was one area where our, our marketing VP came in and said, hey, you know, look, there's an opportunity here. I think our Glassdoor score was maybe 3.5 or 3.75, so it wasn't terrible. Um, but there was definitely opportunity for improvement. And, um, you know, we built in a, a little automation within our own assignment um, journey. Uh, to, to basically ask people to rate us on Glassdoor and, and Google. And um, 
you know, currently I checked this morning just to make sure I was I was right, and I think we stood at like a 4.25 on Glassdoor. Wow. Um, obviously, yeah, a lot, lot, a lot of different things go into that. And our marketing team's done a great job, and our recruiters and salespeople do a great job. Um, but certainly, we've seen an, an increase as we've started to automate that outreach. So that's that's been hugely helpful. Yeah, we've done the same thing um, where we've we've really focused. I mean, again, staffing usually has a low rating, um, you know, across the board. So um, one of our big core, um, you know, pillars is that we're creating a better experience. So we had to live up to that. Um, so we actually incorporated MPS, um, you know, into our on assignment campaign, the same I'm sure that you did, Russ. So it's like, I think it's day 14 for a specific type of, um, uh associate who's working and then day 30 for another but it's all based off of assignment length and everything and then um there's all sorts of um you know based on what they score you know if it's a nine or a ten we ask them to send a review if it's less than that you know we we send them right to the recruiter and they're notified that you know they should probably talk to them you know they're either a passive or detractor um but the idea is that again i think it's what's talked upon right now is that the candidates want instant gratification they want to know that their voice is being heard. They want to know that something's being done. Um, and it's just the Gen Z millennial, like they want, they want to know that somebody's going to do something about it. So, um, you know, it's part of get, gamification as well. You know, they give a great score, they get, you know, they're asked to do this and then yay, thanks. Um, you know, but it's all part of that instant gratification. That I think is even a stronger push right now. Makes yeah, sense. And I'm, I'm sure you guys see this as well, but you, our Google reviews, our, our social presence is becoming more and more popular. And, and that's something that candidates and, and frankly, even clients are um, looking at right away. The, the millennial buyer is very different than buyers of previous days and they're far more educated. They're, they are digital natives. They understand how to move around the internet. Um, and so really taking a control of that employer brand is, is really important. And as we all know, and, and I'm sure you both have, have experienced this, Again, it's one of those things that we can preach and preach and preach, and we can talk to our, our frontline recruiters about, hey, you know, let's talk about our candidates and our clients about sharing their experience, but really being able to, to leverage that automation and, and make sure that we're, we're going through that and that process is getting done um, really helps us capitalize on all those great things that we're making investments in and processes and technology um, to really showcase the brand and improve the reviews so that people are coming to us. Yep, yep. No, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you know, I think um, uh, we've seen a number of companies raise their Glassdoor scores, raise their Google reviews. And, you know, the thing is, it actually makes you a better company. You're now more, uh, more in tune with what your candidates want, which is actually just a win-win for everybody, your customers, yourself, and your candidates. But, you know, so we've spent a few minutes talking about how you can give superpowers to your marketing team, to your brand, uh, you know, to your database. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of, you know, engagement, uh, candidate engagement. This is probably something that all of us have a lot to say about, you know, how do you engage with people through the entire journey of once they actually start working with you. Uh, so, you know, I will, I'll intro this a little bit for pe for folks who are not doing this today, but then I'm just going to turn back to my panel here to sort of walk us through this a little bit. But the idea is that you can literally take any event within your applicant tracking system, any event within Bullhorn to trigger a personalized journey. It could be triggered off of a single field. It could be triggered off of a derived field, a custom field, an actual event. Somebody started, somebody ended. What you're seeing on this screen is some, somebody got submitted to a position. The moment they get submitted, they might get an automated message from the CEO saying, hey, welcome to Pride Staff, welcome to Matrix. You know, this is what we want to tell you about our company, our mission, our mission and our value, uh, mission and values. Maybe a day later you say, by the way, this is the customer we submitted you at. Let's tell you a little bit more about the customer because if you got an interview call there, you should sound more, uh, you know, prepared. So the, what you're seeing here is really a chronological order of anything that you can send people out, uh, uh, divvied up on branches, customers, geography, location, but essentially mimic any process that you have today and automate that. So this is super flexible. You can do that any way you like, but you know, Russ, Jeff, Greg, again, I'll just invite you to talk about, this is probably one of those things we can keep talking about for an hour, but I'll just take 30 second comments from each of you. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I think, you know, what is great about what we do is that, you know, we've got a top-down support of sense and automation. So from our CEO, um, you know, he's even taken an engaged look at, like, what, how are we making sure that the experience is great all the way from submitting to a job, you know, through the process pre-deployment. So, yeah, we've got triggers, you know, once they become hired active or available, you know, we've got a welcome from our agency. We've got a welcome from the agency president. Um, we actually have, um, you know, check-ins that happen maybe day 30 if they haven't been placed anywhere or they're going through the process. You know, we have a, hey, I hope everything's going well. You know, we're, we're working to help you out. If you see anything else, let us know. So, you know, we've got all these different things. We have surveys when they're interviewing um, that are triggered based off of an internal interview, you know, with the recruiter. Um, and the whole point of it is just to create a better experience. And again, that instant gratification that their resume isn't lost. Yep. You know, or, or that or that touch point with that recruiter is not done and they at least know what, what's going to happen next. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing I was going to say was you can also now make sure that you're delivering these experiences in a mobile first manner. You know, this is where your candidates live now. Uh, Greg, I know you're a guru in this because, you know, in essentially delivering mobile first experiences. But, you know, imagine pulling the data directly from your ATS, making sure it's a personalized communication, but actually delivering it in a bite-sized fashion, you know, using an SMS. So uh, Jeff, love to get, uh, Greg, sorry, Jeff, uh, love to get your thoughts on this as well. Yeah, this is a, a, a huge thing. And, and we all know this. And, and if we think about our own lives, right, uh, mobile first is, is massive. We walk around with a, if we talk about 20 years ago, what we have in our pockets today is a, a supercomputer 20 years ago. Um, the, the power that we have to be able to deliver these messages quickly, efficiently, um, and really leverage the automation tools from Sense. But more importantly, it, with automation, we still can't lose that human connection and that human touch. And the ability with the Sense products to start a conversation in automation, um, where that's automatically being triggered based on something that's happening in the ATS, but then really pass that off to the recruiter that's having that one-on-one -on -one conversation that can help the candidate who can answer the question quickly and efficiently. Um, to, to have that ability to go back and forth um, is really unique from a, from a staffing industry perspective and, and really helps us be as efficient as possible, but also provide that best experience so that ultimately, at the end of the day, we want our candidates to think that in those automated messages, we thought about them, stopped, took five minutes out of our day to send them a message, and we can have that conversation to reinforce that after they respond. Yeah, and Greg, what you're talking about is actually pretty close to, pretty close to my heart. You know, the thing we talk about as integrated messaging, you know, here you have messaging sitting right on top of Bullhorn. You're doing seamless automated communications. But as soon as somebody responds, you immediately turn that back to a conversation that they're having with their recruiter. So you can send automation all day long. You know, here are a thousand people and you tell them, hey, hope you all guys got your paycheck today. And you might send out a thousand messages. But the one person who responds and says, actually, my paycheck was incorrect that immediately goes to your recruiter and it immediately automatically converts into a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And that can only happen when you do integrated messaging. So again, you know, Russ, I don't, I, I know you have thoughts on this and, you know, Greg, you do too. So, you know, by the way. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm a huge proponent. Of, and it's kind of magical, actually. Um, I'm a little bit of a control freak. So a lot of times the messages that go out, uh, the responses come directly back to me. Uh, which is a little weird, but uh, but it but it allows me to kind of see what's going on, and and I've had tons of conversations with different uh, consultants, you know, that they're having an issue or a problem, or they just wanted to say hi to somebody or whatever, and um, you know, it, it's amazing how quickly it can turn from a hey, I'm having a problem, to you very quickly point them in the right direction, get somebody on the line to help them, and they're just they're thrilled. Um, so to me, this is the secret sauce as it relates to automation is being able to tie it back to a human when you need to. Um, the candidate doesn't always need to be talking to a human. They're fine with an automated message, except when they need somebody. And you, we've been able to leverage sense pretty seamlessly to do that in certain instances. I love it. Yep. Thank you. Greg, anything you want to add? I, I would just absolutely echo that. I mean, it's, it's all about reducing the friction that the, the, your candidates are experiencing. Um, and again, that, that 
automation start, um, and Russ, you said it, to, they don't necessarily always need to, to have a recruiter who's reaching out to them, but they need to have that touch point. We can't just set candidates out and set them and forget them. We, we have to have something that goes in that reinforces that, hey, we're here for you, we're part of the team. Um, but the ability to to have that conversation, to answer what needs to be answered and, and overall reduce the issue um, as quick as possible just is ultimately providing the best experience we can. Awesome. Yeah, I remember uh, rolling out Sense. We just uh, rolled the entire network on Sense messaging last week. Um, but rolling out Sense the first time about, I think it was maybe almost two years ago. And I remember a comment I got from one of our, from our staffing company that we, we baited, you know, one, one, and then we roll it out to the network where they, they came, I said, Hey, how's everything going? And they're like, uh, they're responding back. And I'm like, <laughs> well, yeah, they're going to, when you send out stuff like, and, and so it was one of those things that was like, they, they, I, we just did a, a start date reminder and they're like, somebody just told me they're not going to show up. I said, well, that's probably a good thing that you found out now versus when, and like, and they're like, Holy crap. Like we, you know, we got to do something about it. And I'm like, and so it was great because they had to build their internal processes around it when they were like, yeah, somebody's actually responding back. And I'm like, yeah, and they will, and they will continue. Yeah. Jeff, we had a, we had a really similar mentality and, and kind of eye opening about three and a half, four years ago as well. It was that, that same piece uh, the, the ability to now text and, and go to where candidates are. Um, it's just an avenue for communication. It's, it's no different than them calling in or them sending you an email. Um, so again, that ability to respond um, and not take the candidate away from that desired communication channel that they've already said that this is how I want to communicate you with is just incredibly invaluable. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so we're going to get to the last stage of this candidate life cycle. You know, when people are on assignment, their experience while they're working for you and how do you redeploy them? How can automation help there? How can you create delightful experiences for people there? Um, you know, the number one thing is essentially just making sure that your assignment isn't a black hole. I mean, I, I can't tell you this, but the paradigm that I grew up in when I was running staffing firms was every candidate's uh, thinking was, hey, once I start working for you, I'm just a number to you. You are just cutting me a paycheck. I never hear from you after that. And I'm just making you some money. And I think, you know, the world has changed our entire 360 from that point, because now everybody wants you to know exactly how they're feeling, wants you to give them a personalized experience and wants you to make sure that their experience keeps better, keeps getting better, you know, every single month, every single week. So Greg, I'd love to get some of your thoughts on this. I mean, you are the experience guru. That's exactly what you do for, you know, Pride Stuff, which is a huge organization. Uh, but there's probably, you know, lots of nuggets of wisdom that you can share with us on this. Yeah, Pankaj, thank you. This is, again, this is something that we could probably talk about for a couple of hours. Yeah. Um, but really, it's, it's about making sure that our candidates understand, I think I used this previously, that it's not a set and forget, right? We, we want them to feel part of the team. We want them to understand that they're part of our brand um, more and more that that's something that they're looking for. We, we're not trying to create a transactional piece we want somebody to be able to leverage and redeploy and get back out to work and, and ultimately turn our brand into something that they may have worked with while they were a candidate, but in five, 10 years, as their experience changed, they become a client. And to, to really be able to focus on that and provide the best experience throughout their entire timeline and their journey while they're out on assignment, um, and to be able to respond if there are any issues. Um, that's massive. And, and when we reach out and we're saying, hey, tell us about how things are going at ABC company. Um, and if candidates are responding to that, they're going to respond. And, and we do see them respond, but they have to know that somebody is really back there, that someone's getting that feedback. And it's not just going into, like you mentioned, package a black hole. Yeah. Um, that's when we see disengagement. That's when we see people losing connection with our brand. They want to be heard. And, and frankly, we need to hear them because those are how we stay ahead of issues and we can solve small problems before they turn into no call, no shows, or they turn into quits and they turn into things that actually impact the bottom line. Um, and that's just a, a massive benefit for us utilizing the Sense platform. Yeah, thank you. And you know, the other big thing, uh, the other big thing, this is probably one of the biggest uh, things that you worry about as staffing executives is redeployment. 
you know, we've talked about this ad nauseum with staffing companies, the idea that you have people working with you for only one single assignment, and there are less than 5% of the people in your company who do uh, second or subsequent assignments with you essentially means that you're paying the same cost per hire every single time you are filling in a new assignment. So one of the biggest things that you know Sense helps you do and automation platforms help you do is just make sure that you never let anybody fall through the cracks. I mean, uh, in some cases, in the cases of a light industrial worker, maybe you need to reach out to them three days before they finish their assignment. In the case of you know what Rust does over at Matrix, maybe you need to reach out to them 30 days before they finish their assignment to say, let's start you know engaging you in another search. So this is a huge automation use case. Greg, I'm going to call on you again because I know we did a case study with you and these numbers were just mind boggling. So, you know, it'd be interesting for all of us to you know, hear that. Yeah, it, this this was something when we first came on to Sense, um, we were obviously we're looking at an experience perspective, um, but also how does this tool really help our bottom line? And, and we saw that not only on the front side with uh, candidate funnels, but we saw that the way that we could make the direct impact the, in the most effective way was to really target redeployments. And so we set out on a journey internally to understand what our current redeployment rate was when we came on to Sense and really look at how can we automate things? How can we create journeys? How can we drive that redeployment? Um, and we were able during 2019 to take that from 26% to 40% which for light industrial, we really are, we have to have redeployment. I mean, that is something that is really key to our business. And to drive that from 26 to 40 um, really was a massive change. We saw the increase in placement lengths happen as well, um, about a 10% increase in, in that particular metric. Um, and ultimately that represented about a $30 million increase in revenue where we were only paying an extra 100 associates uh, throughout the entire year. So that big focus really translated to what we saw at the bottom line. Um, and we're, we're extremely happy with those results. Yeah, no, and I, I love that story, Greg, because one of the central things that you caught on there is how everything that we've been talking about essentially has a bottom line impact on your company. This is not just things that you're doing to be more sort of tech savvy or more automated. You're absolutely doing that, but at the same time, it is just absolutely increasing your bottom line. We have customers where we now track their gross margin dollars and see how we are impacting them month after month. But anyway, just to just to sort of bring it all together, you know, we've talked about we've talked about various stages of your candidate and customer life cycle and how automation can help. But I finally want to turn it back on to you know three of our experts on the panel today and just talk about what's the tech stack that they've built. It's basically our way of giving you some prescriptive guidance on here are some tech stacks that work. Um, so I'll call upon all of you one by one to just share that with our audience. Uh, Jeff, if you want to start first uh, and just you know tell us how you thought about your tech stack. Yeah, so I mean, I've been with Talent Launch for a little over two years. Um, and one of the first things that I did when I started there was, you know, you know again, a, a second part of our core principle is technology and innovation is that that's what we're all about. Um, you can get caught up in technology and innovation being 150 different, you know, technology platforms that you're running and you're never running them well at all. Um, so what we're really looking at and what I, I've been focusing on over the last couple of years, the first thing was automation. Um, you know, and getting sense in. I mean, we needed it. Um, I come from a marketing automation background, um, and so I love it. And, you know, really what we, we've been looking at over the last year and a half or so is, is looking at our processes and finding the gaps and fitting the technology into those gaps. Because I think that a lot of times we get shiny object syndrome, you know, especially when you're dealing with different staffing presidents and um, where they want different things. You want this, and you want that. So, really cutting to the core, Bullhorn is our ATS and our CRM, you know, putting sense in there. And really that's kind of our core tech stack for our entire um, network is, is starting there. Um, because I think you can get caught in, in other technologies that you just don't know how to use. So, you know, and, and that's what, I mean, we want to continue that with AI, you know, chatbots. We want to continue that with, um, you know, automating our processes and cleaning the database. So those are things that are going to really help us um, go. And then as we find plug and play, you know, we may want to add them on, but I, I worry about adding too much 
and not being able to trace root cause and, and you know, creating a, a, a poor experience when you're really trying to create a seamless, great experience. Thank you. Um, Russ, do you want to share, share with us your tech stack? Yeah, gosh, I mean, I think Jeff kind of summed it up, uh, not to copy off of his, uh, his paper or anything, but um, I, I mean, at heart, really Bullhorn and Sense are kind of the two, uh, you know, legs, I guess, of, of our technology stack to start with, and then we augment from there. As I mentioned before, and, and Jeff did a good job of kind of elucidating this, you know, we don't want to use multiple disparate systems to do one individual thing. It's not cost effective. It's very difficult from an integration perspective, and it also a lot of times leads to a bad candidate experience. You find out that you're sending multiple different messages to the same person at essentially the same time, uh, and that's very problematic. So the more that we can centralize things in one or two kind of core platforms, ideally that are very tightly integrated with one another, that, that's really what we're looking for there. And then on top of that, we're doing some other stuff in terms of, of BI and analytics and reporting to give us better insight into the data um, and to be able to, to leverage that moving forward. But, but we're really looking at you, Pankaj, and your team at Sense to keep pushing things forward. And, and uh, we're excited. Yeah, we're excited to see what's going to happen next. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, uh, Greg. Well, I, I mean, you both gentlemen, I mean, hit the nail on the head. A, a kind of funny, Russ. You said copying the paper. I mean, that sounds exactly how we are. We're thinking about it. Is is we have a core ATS and and Bullhorn is our our ATS, and then we're we're looking to have a kind of a, a key piece outside of that and where then we start talking about, hey, here's our engagement software. And, and yes, we may need to automate and we may need to augment here and there um, with some other pieces that maybe that's not fully within those two platforms. Um, but you all hit it right on the head is, is we absolutely believe from a, a change management perspective and internal um, adoption perspective that you very much can have. And also a bottom line that you can have death by a thousand sasses. And as you start adding in all of these different platforms, they become really niched and to find a partner that allows us to do a lot of things in one. But Russ, you mentioned, and this is a big priority for us, is it has to be fully integrated. The, the experience to our candidates, the experience on our internal staff, um, the experience just utilizing everything and how data flows, it, we can't have them be segmented. Um, and so having partners like Sense that um, understand the integration points and are working with other partners in the staffing industry to, to build that out um, really helps nail that tech stack and give us something that we, we believe is the most competitive in the industry. Thank you, Craig. I really appreciate all of you saying that. And, uh, you know, with that, I, I wanted to sum, uh, sum up for you what that tech stack looks like from a sense standpoint. You know, we talked about the entire uh, uh, talent life cycle. This is the talent life cycle you see here, right from sourcing and attracting somebody to redeploying them. Sense has a variety of different products. Sense Engage, which is our automation product. Sense Messaging, which is a two-way text messaging platform. We talked about that to keep in touch using personalized messages. And then the recruiting chatbot is your conversational AI assistant. So you could use any one of those products. You can use all three of them together, but essentially, this is the tech stack that we've built. We will continue to keep adding to this tech stack and just make sure that we can essentially engage with candidates, customers, your own internal staff, alumni, people in your database, um, you know, from cradle to grave, if you will. And I wanted to apologize to everybody on the call. We, we, we got a ton of different questions, but we are almost running out of time here. Uh, so what we will promise to you is that we will answer those questions and reach back out to you individually. We absolutely know you know, who asked that question and who you were. Um, but I'd love, to, I'd love to thank the panel. Uh, you know, this is uh, from my perspective, just to take a personal moment here, this has been a dream panel for me. Uh, you know, the companies that you see here, uh, Matrix, Talent Launch, Pride Staff are some of the most, you know, some of the largest power users of our platform. Uh, even though I know all of them said good things about Sense today, they're probably the company that have pushed us the most. They've asked us, you know, for things that have gotten us out of our comfort zones. So I really, really thank, you know, Russ, Jeff, and Greg for joining me today. Thank you, thank you. Thank thank you, you. Pleasure. Thank you so much. And with that, uh, you know, for our promise, we will end on time. We're 30 seconds shy of noon, and we will give that time back to all of you. Thank you again for making the time to join this webinar. 
like I mentioned, we will be circulating a recording. So you will absolutely get the conversation and the slides from today uh, shortly after we close the webinar. Thank you, everybody.